Hey guys, so I've actually just bought a high field dinghy. Um, our old dinghy is just on its way out. It's not reliable enough to um, take across the Pacific. So they've given me a great deal on a high field dinghy 380 because um, it's been used. It's still gonna cost me an absolute fortune to um, ship this thing down to Panama. Red light, running motherfuckers. We're just on our way to Nautical Ventures now um, to check out the dinghy. I've got a carload of materials and, and stuff that we need to fix parlay. So I'm just gonna put all of that in the dinghy and ship it all together down to Panama. And um, that's what's happening. This thing looks so sick. How good is it? It's 12 feet three, uh, 380. So what have you done for us? You put a bimini on it. You put a bimini on it. That's yeah. so sick. Got it, got it ready to go. Put launch wheels on the back of it, name on the side. Nice, man. Gave that extra little touch, huh? Yeah. And so you remember John, he took us fishing and we caught those massive sailfish. Um, he's just met us at Nautical Ventures and he's giving us some lures. He's uh, seen us struggle on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so divers, this one's obviously a little bit heavier. If you get something monstrous, use the one with the big old lure. Yeah. Here's some 50 pound mono to put on them. This will be perfect to pull with those lures on those rods. This is more abrasion resistant. When it's in the water, it's virtually invisible. That's and so you'll much, also man. use that when you do a little bit of bottom fishing. So you, you'll basically. <laughs> here we go guys, check this out. We've got the high field here and we have packed it to the brim. We've got epoxy, lines, we've got a generator in here, merchandise, we've got so much stuff in here. We're paying $12 per cubic foot to send it down and we've just tried to fill it to the brim. So there you have it, the new Highfield. We'll see you in two weeks. You. There we go. Made it through customs. We are in the airport. Obviously there's no one here. Going to Panama City. Gonna arrive at 2 a.m. And then uh, I've got a meeting tomorrow in Panama City. And then we're going to Linton Bay. So I'm so excited to see Jamie and McFly and Parley. So I've been away since July last year. Can't wait. Hello guys, we've made it to Panama. We're in Panama City. Our good friend Leo that we met in Linton Bay has kindly let us stay at his amazing apartment here. I just posted a story on Instagram about this view and a 16 year old kid who has his sailboat in this little marina here said he wants to take us sailing but unfortunately Oh shit, there's whales. Wow, oh, can't really zoom in far enough. Yeah, but unfortunately we're leaving in a couple of hours, so we can't do that. Sorry mate, that would have been super fun. I've just arrived here in Linton Bay, the marina where everyone is. And I think I just saw McFly in the distance, so I don't know what his reaction's gonna be. I don't know what my reaction's gonna be. We lost Marty, as you know. It's been a tough, tough, half a year but I'm gonna go see him now and see what he reckons. <laughs> I'm so excited man. My heart's racing. <laughs> He's about 20 meters off Barlow. Hey guys, it is so, so good to be back on Parlay. This weight has been lifted off my shoulders. Florida was stressful 
and that rebuild wasn't easy, I had to come back. I had to come back and we've got to really start planning the rebuild of this boat. All the bulkheads are cracked and we've got to do a big electrical installation. But man, just to be back in Panama, back on Parlay, back with McFly. But I just feel this huge relief, like I'm home. So we're speaking with the naval architect that designed the boat about the best way to reinforce Parlay and uh, get her straight, how we're going to know when she is straight, and then how to reinforce her in a way that she will stay straight. So it's a very technical repair this one. There's not so much just hard grunt labor. It's more technical analyzing where the stresses have been, where we need to reinforce, and just doing it slowly and properly so that this boat can go around the world. So if some of you have noticed that Martina has been absent from the videos for the last couple of months, um, that is because we broke up. Um, we had an incredible year together. We went through a lot. So she was there when the bulkheads broke, we got struck by lightning. Um, our relationship started basically when the pandemic started and we were forced to live together on the boat. And I've always said that being on a relationship, whether it's a, a small sailboat, catamaran or a super yacht, every year is like dog years, it's like seven years. So all the highs are accentuated, but all the lows are accentuated. You've got nowhere to um, sort of escape from each other if you're having any, any uh, conflict or anything like that. So it's always difficult. We tried, we really, really tried. We tried all sorts of things to try and make it work and it, it just wasn't, wasn't gonna work out in the long term. So um, I think we've both now accepted the fact that it was the right decision. I've got a big part to play in that because I've been so driven and focused um, for my projects, you know, the YouTube. I'm working all day fiberglassing and then um, editing videos at night because all of these work episodes I can't really get the girls to edit them because uh, I don't want to, them to miss important things or, um, yeah, it's, I'm pretty much the only one that can edit them. So um, I'm crazy busy and I have been like this for the last six to eight months. Also me going on a reality TV show was, um, well she trusted me enough to go on the show and I was completely faithful throughout but it was still challenging and uh, I completely understand why that's challenging. It's, that environment is not conducive to uh, being in a long, long distance relationship for that amount of time. So uh, those of you who have gotten to know me a little bit through this channel uh, may have realized that I'm a firm believer in everything happening for a reason. Um, you know, things may seem to be bad, like this breakup is, it was sad and everything. We've had time to, to get over it a little bit now, but um, it all happens for a reason, you know, the boat breaking, getting struck by lightning, all of these things are just working perfectly together to uh, shape us into the people that we are. There's a quote that goes, um, don't be sad that it's over, be happy that it happened. And that's exactly how I feel about this relationship. You know, life goes on and you can't dwell on these moments. Um, worry is a wasted emotion. So just gotta pick yourself up. And uh, if anyone else is going through a tough time in their lives, realize that there is, you know, light at the end of the tunnel. Um, time does heal all wounds. Uh, we're both gonna be absolutely fine. And uh, there's comfort in knowing that. Please, if you've, if you've come to uh, enjoy watching her, go to her Instagram, which is uh, Oceano Martina, and uh, follow her there. And she's got some exciting projects coming up. She just won uh, a grant for $25,000 to pursue her next documentary. So she's got some really interesting things coming up in her life as well. I've actually, I've got a tattoo. It says, realize deeply that the present moment is all you will ever have. And that's a quote from, um, Eckhart Tolle who wrote the book The Power of Now and I read that years ago and it changed my life um, and it, I take it as just needing to just focus on the present moment um, and right now I'm here in Linton Bay we're about to fix Parlay um, so I'm just putting all of my energy into that not regretting anything that's happened in the past and not too worried about what's going to happen in the future just focusing on the now and we're being driven by this dream to sail around the world and first main milestone of that is going to be sailing home to New Zealand so life's good life's really good she's doing okay I'm doing fine 
Uh, we don't want even anyone to feel sorry for us. Hope you can appreciate that I've shared a little bit of this with you. There's a lot more to the story, obviously, but we want to keep a lot of that private. It's between her and I, and uh, I hope you guys can respect that. But anyway, here we are. It's time to fix this boat. How's it going? Well, how are you? Good, good, good. Hey, let's go up to York so we can check the All right, man. Spots. One so the we'll, other. we'll be somewhere in this. But yeah, you're going to be in this area, and most likely once they leave, put you somewhere in here. So but this is this is a Lagoon 500. So this is slightly bigger than our boat, but um, very, very similar. So there's a bulkhead around here. And we'll get two, two fillers here. Yeah, with the stamps and or block it, and then nothing till back here. The other one is here. Okay. It's at the about here. At the front of the engine room, there's a bulkhead here. So we'll get two pillars here, two pillars there, and then as we back the shrouds off, we'll just chop it all up. Very, very similar setup to this boat. So just, just while I got these guys here, um, this is Brian, he's the marina manager, and this is Jim, he's the yard manager. So he's gonna be the one lifting the boat up. Um, mm -hmm. I drive the tra I drive the travel lift. So. He's the travel lift guy. And yeah. making it happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a man that can get things done. Yes. So that's that's the team that we're going to be working with, um, hauling out hopefully beginning of next week, um, and we'll make it happen. Very good. We're ready. Do you well, see the next any couple of months? Do you yeah. foresee any issues hauling us out? No, none at all. Should, the machine's not a, not a problem. We've got all the stuff for the stand, so we can get it nice and level. Yeah, it should not be an issue. So what, um, what have you got in the facilities here? Just so people know they're cruising in the Caribbean and this is an option to uh, haul out. Um, well, right now our advantage uh, here in Panama, it's actually, this is the biggest, tra biggest travel lift here in the whole area. It's Cartagena and, and, and up to Nicaragua. Uh, we, that's 160 tons. We can uh, haul out uh, catamarans wide up to 39 feet wide. Right now we got space for 45 boats and we're expanding for another 45 more uh, for the next couple of two months. Really? Yeah, that soon. All the um, slips have power and water? Yes, all the slips have water and, and electricity. Our water is basically from a well that we built from the mountain down here. Oh, really? We got water 24-7 all year all around. Wow, awesome. So that's cool. Perfect. So basically do it yourself also. We allow you to do the work as you come in. That's another thing, you're allowed to grind and... Exactly, and, and you got contractors here in the area that you can hire, uh, handiwork and, and yeah. Yeah, awesome, yeah. No, we're super happy to be here. Um, well, glad to have you here also and hope everything goes good. We'll uh, get this shit done. Well, <laughs> hope to have you back in the water soon. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> well, there you go, guys, we got a game plan. Again, we're just going to confirm that with um, Vincent, the naval architect, and uh, that's where we're going. That's the travel lift right there, and that's going to be our berth right there, right in front of the clubhouse here. It's a great location, get a nice gentle breeze, it's going to be nice until we start grinding fiberglass. You excited? Yeah, really excited to start uh, grinding fiberglass again. Your favourite? Yeah. Hola!